Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Jaimo Benedetti. I'm a video artist from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I create this wonderful project. I'm saying wonderful because we are in the last episode. So a little bit feeling. Uh, we have here Flickr and Flow. It's a series of online interviews with specialists, uh, high-level specialists related to the archaeology of the moving image. The idea is to investigate, listen, and learn about things related to the history of pre-cinema. We have the support of Pontificia Universidade Católica, thanks to Professor Marcos Bastos, and also the Universidade Estadual do Maringá. Thank you, Professor Rodrigo Gontijo. As we say, we are we having our last episode. We have the five previous interviews that are available on, on my YouTube channel, Raimo Benedetti. You can uh, watch us access there. And today we have the honor of talking to bring here Stefan Otterman. So Stefan Otterman is an independent researcher who works in different fields, having published books on the history of tattooing in Europe, elephants brought to Europe in the last thousand years, a biographical dictionary of magicians, among others. Stefan, Stefan Otterman's book, The Panorama, History of a Mass Medium, is the first major historical study to appear on the rich phenomenon of the panorama. One of the most influential forms of visual entertainment in the 19th century. The book gives readers a concrete sense of the structural and experiential reality of the panorama phenomenon, not only as a new kind of image, but also as an architectural and informational component of the new urban space and median networks. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stefan Otterman. Hello. 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 Stephen. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much to join us today. So, Stefan, when did you uh, give your last interview related to Panorama? 30 years ago. Oh, no. <laughs> I cannot believe that. 30 years ago. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I wrote the book 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, I had uh, other things to do. <laughs> and since there, because your book, <clears throat> I would just uh, suggest that Nicole, who is in background, if you could type Nicole, Stefan Otterman, the book, his book on Amazon, just to show us here. So since you read the book 40 years ago, uh, it becomes like a, a reference and no one came to, to, to you to talk about your book since then? Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not a university man. I had to work in other fields and uh, I, I was not interested in panoramas anymore. I did my I did my uh, thing and uh, it was good. Really? So it's, it's not for all the life, you know, I have other things to do. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you ask me. So. Yes. What so you, you think, well, I was a young student. I was not not 30 years old and uh, i did this book and it was uh, the right book to the right time and uh, uh, so i was very proud about this but uh, after that um, i didn't want to go to university well i worked at university sometimes but uh, uh, well i I'm, don't want to be a researcher in the field of the prehistory of cinema <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so other Aki Aki is it's his job to do this, and he's interested. I'm interested in 
public entertainment in a broader sense. And uh, so I came to panoramas or I came from panoramas to the public entertainment in a broader, in a broader field, you know. Yes. So, uh, 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 do I'm not you a, sorry. Well, I'm not a specialist in archaeology of uh, cinema. Yes. So, but um, did you realize that when did you realize that your book, uh, uh, in spite of being, uh, if I understand, a, a period of your career? Because before the uh, writing it and after you were involved with many uh, different uh, fields of, but most of them relate to popular culture. As I read on your, your biography, biography mm. before you wrote a, a book about elephants, magicians, uh, and tattooing in Europe, etc. So you, uh, in spite of being involved. Uh, of uh, of course, you are proud of writing your book, but uh, do you feel that your book becomes like a, a phantom or a phantasmagoria to your to you, or you give a, you have a relaxed way of dealing with it? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I I done it, and uh, I done it. And um, and um, I did what I could, and uh, so um, there was nothing more to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But nowadays, I'm a bit more experienced. I would I, I know very much more. So, for instance, on German panoramas and so on. But at this time, this was all I could say about panoramas, and there was no. Um, thread of uh, pre-cinema history there were there were no one which which uh, with whom i could discuss or so and no one wanted to discuss with me it took five years or or longer than any people read this book and it took much more uh, time that the english or american uh, edition come on the market you see, so so um, I I was away from the point. I was uh, in very other regions, uh, uh, you know. So but, I left it behind. I left it behind for me. So yes, um, but sorry in, about this. But uh, yeah, it's no, no, cent it's not the center of my life, you know. Yes, of course, but. Uh, in the first e email that we exchange, you answer mm. like that. No, Panorama is not the center of my life. And I say, oh, Stefan, come to talk about Panorama. So when you uh, starting uh, writing the book, what were, what were your motivations? Uh, my motivations was um, the idea that uh, the art to see as people as men like to see or oh, to say it more less complicated can a man from the 15th century see a photography or if a man from the 15th century sees a photography can he uh, can he see what it is can he understand this yeah. Do you, do, do no, you know I, what I, I mean, yes, I think he couldn't understand that. So, yeah. Well, uh, my my thing is, we have to learn to see as we in modern times see. So, for instance, a cinema play to a man from the 15th century would work nothing. He wouldn't understand. He, he wouldn't yes. understand what he, what he would see. And if this is true. I have to explain how it comes, how we develop our eye to uh, the modern medias. And this was the idea and I tried, I, I, I found for, for just chance the panoramas. 
no one knows about pan rounds at this time. And uh, I found it was an example. And um, well, I tried to explain what I understood, you know. And it was not a technical, uh, technical history of the prehistory of cinema. So it was a mental history of uh, on the on the example of panoramas. You understand? And, yes, I understand. And what in in that sense of uh, building a way of uh, seeing, constructing a different way of seeing, in especially in, in 19th century, where is located the golden age of panorama. Uh, what do you think, Stefan, that uh, Panorama could achieve or introduce uh, as a, a new possibility for, for the, the eye of the observer? Difficult to explain. Uh, well, from, the, from looking back, a photograph is only a small part. It is a part, a, a bit of an exploded panorama. You understand? A photography yes. is just a small part. And to, to see, to understand the photography, you have to know an idea about everything around you. You have, a, you have the idea that is a whole 360 degree and a photograph is a very small part of it. And it can be a riddle, what you can see on the photograph, you see? Mm -hmm. And before the panoramas, every picture, every square picture, was the whole world in it. Mm. And then you understood, well, th this is can't be the whole world. It must be broader, 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 always broader this, until this. And then you had the idea of panoramas, and I uh, I tried to understand how did it came to this. Uh, discovering the horizon is uh, discovering the horizon. And the panorama is a picture of the horizon. It's an it's an experience we didn't have before. The uh, idea of a horizon, and with the panorama we have the idea of the of the horizon, and in the panorama. It's the exact, the exact picture of the world. And it can't be ex more exact, but in the moment we see it's exact, we see it's without, without movement. Mm -hmm. You understand? Just the moment we see, we, we have an exact picture of the world, we see it's not complete, it lacks movement. And so it develops out of the panorama, the diorama mm -hmm. and, the movie, and the moving panorama and so on. And I try to understand how this worked from a square feet picture of the 15th century or a picture before uh, perspective, coming to perspective, coming to panorama, coming to uh, moving panoramas, moving pictures and so on. This was the idea and not the not in a technical way, not mm -hmm. as a history of techniques following apparatus and so on. So uh, in the, what happens with our mind, what happens with our mental, um, I don't know how the word is. And uh, this was the idea in this time. And if you read the book, you, you understand, I am, I'm, uh, it's more from the literature than uh, literature and pictures than from the thought from the cinema. It's not, you understand? I, I didn't look it. Yeah. So uh, uh, the moment that the panorama appears uh, in Europe with uh, Robert Baker in Ireland, Scotland, I'm sorry, in Great mm. Britain, in the end of uh, 18th century, 1780, blah, blah, blah. There was in that moment uh, uh, um, a growing of uh, that was the ne necessity of bigger images was going 
more uh, there were more practicals of big screens in the sense of uh, growing this the size and the uh, the immigration of the painting from churches to the to the canvas can you uh, uh, say to us what was this uh, uh, social uh, moment, historical moment of the birth of Panorama, please? In in, in the 18th century, the, uh, the end of 18th century. It was a moment uh, of social change. And um, people before this, prospective people, have only one viewer, the man who owns the picture, can see the picture. No one, it has one point of view. And if you sit beside me, you don't see the picture in the right way. And after that, um, you are not a king. So it came, a new form of pictures has to come for the mass of people. And um, this is a panorama, it's a first mass medium. It's very difficult to understand how it did or how this happened. Uh, what everything comes together, for instance, the, uh, the, the balloon flying, the climbing of the mountains and so on, this broadening the horizon. Mm -hmm. And the panorama is the picture of the broadening of the horizon yeah so this i tried to uh to show yes and do but, you think but, that... it, but the, this is the idea and uh um what i have written in the book is uh i, I try to trace uh every detail how how did it in uh how was it with, in the, with the panoramas in great britain how was it in germany how was it uh, in other parts of europe what happened how it developed uh how it it came high, very popular, lost its popularity, and again, out of which reasons uh, it came again to a popularity, and behind the 19th century, with the invention of the cinema, it died and was forgotten, forgotten. but 80 years forgotten, and uh, it took 80 years to something to be uh, uh, forgotten, to discover it again, and I was, by chance, uh, one of the first who discovered it again. So it was just 80 years ago uh, uh, that uh, it went forgotten on the uh, World Exhibition in uh, Paris. It was the last uh, last big event of panoramas. Yes, yes, so I, I can reach, I would like to reach it in our interview, this uh, French, this Paris uh, great uh, exhibition there. So uh, we we are watching here one of Charles Langlois rotundas in in Champs Elysees, Paris, and this big stadium. We have to say who, who is watching us and don't know nothing be, about Panorama because Stefan, you know that until today there are many kind of uh, many kind of uh, information lost information about Panorama and. It's not so well known until today, uh, even in academic universities, Panorama. So we have to show and to inform people that Panorama is uh, a 360-degree deg uh, uh, painting, uh, which is inside this enormous building. Is that correct? No? Uh, yes. You should show... Um... A cut through the uh, you show that it's inside how it looks inside outside look it looks like a circus or, or whatever no uh, um, as I don't know how it's called architectural how it uh, how you have to go into and uh, go between and uh, you don't have uh, such a picture uh, of uh... yeah a bit like this but more schematic. Ah, or, okay. uh, yes, uh, let me see if I have here. No, I, I only have from the diorama. 
<clears throat> uh, the one I have here just to, to show uh, the dimension of a panorama. So let's say to uh, everyone who is watching us, this is the idea of uh, uh, a screen which can uh, have like uh, in median, uh, in average, sorry, 10 minutes, <clears throat> 10 meter, uh, 10, 15 meters high. Is that correct, Steph Stefan? Yeah, yeah, it differs, uh, but uh, yes, there up are to, up, up to up to 12 meters, 8 to 12 meters, sometimes 60 meters, and so on. If that differs at 120 meters in broad, but round and uh, 30 meters in diameter, and so on. You, you have to explain this. Uh, it's a picture around you. Yes. And you can't see uh, you can't see the frame of it. You can't see what's above. You can't see what's beneath. You can't see an end right. You can't see an end le left. It's just around the picture. And it's put into a b special build building and a special um, lighting. Uh, so it seems to be the rea reality around you. And you should have a, a special, a more, um, what is the name of it? Um, uh, I know it's a kind of diagram. Article. Diagram uh, 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 from above. Uh, no, no, not from above, from the side. Uh, how, how it works. Ah, yes, Robert Baker's panorama. Yes, I'm For sure. Instance. You, yeah, that's here. Okay. Yeah, that's here. So um, you come, you come here. The most here is a picture of Robert Barton. If, can you see my my? Uh, yeah. Yes, I've. Yeah, on this time, there's the most important. You can't see it because here's a picture. Uh, the most important, or on this side, the most important part of the panorama. It's a pay, uh, the place where you have to pay the entrance fee. This is mm. the most important. A part of a panorama. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. <laughs> so, and you you pay your entrance fee. Go yeah. in here. Go up here. So, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, Stefan. We are not watching your mouse. Sorry, I, uh, so. I said I, yes. I said yes, but now I realize that no, that was my mouse here. <clears throat> oh. Can you okay. can you see my mouse here? Yeah, I see your mouse. Okay. So that's the you, entrance. You, you have to climb up to the platform. Yes, please. Here, so, yes, here's a platform, and yeah. around this, there is a 360 degree picture. Yes, and, great. And go and go up with your mouse up to the roof. Yes, so with the roof these of, stairs. No, no, I, no, I no, with your mouse up to the roof. To the, uh, roof. To the roof, to the light. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there you see the lights coming from above, but on the platform you can't see from where the light comes. So if you go up here. Yeah, you can see the the upper uh, the the upper part of the building, and you can't yeah. see the lower part of the building. So it seems as if you look sit in a pavilion uh, and look around, and yes, you, you, you don't understand from where the light comes. The light comes only from the uh, uh, from the picture itself. It falls down through the uh, roof. On the picture and reflects from the picture in your into your eye, and that is uh, the technique that um, is makes the illusion. Yes, so the 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 building structure is essential from a good uh, visuality of the panorama. No. Yeah, the the definition of panorama is picture three hundred sixty degree building for for the lighting and paying the entrance fee these are the three parts which make the panorama and this makes the, these three things makes a mass medium mm. no one can own privately a panorama you know mm -hmm. you can have a, a, a king or who, whoever can have privately a church to pray but yeah. he can he never will have a private panorama because you can't no one has a power panorama yes. so it's the first the first uh, part of art uh, that uh, which is really mass medium yes. you can't buy it you, yeah. you can only 
pay your entrance fee. Yes. So uh, the, uh, we have to say this is the drawing of the Panorama Patente, uh, patent from Robert Barker. No, uh, to everyone who is watching us. And so did he, uh, in the very beginning, intended to have these three uh, pillars together, paying, uh, commerci commercializing, yeah. Uh, the the building and they also the immersive situation <clears throat> no of course he had not he was a very bad painter and a very bad artist mm -hmm. and uh, he was just a stubborn he had the idea to make a picture around him everyone said this won't work because everyone who knows something about art said this is no possibly possibility for for a picture because it's very difficult to light a picture when you stand in between. Mm. So he tried this and he tried it. The inventor didn't do it uh, by himself. Uh, he himself thought it wouldn't work. And he asked his 12 year old son to do this. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, the inventor said, well, take your time. Uh, uh, I have no time. Do you this what I have invented? And uh -huh. they tried it, and it no one thought that it would work, that would give the illusion, but it gave the illusion. And it is a it is a machine out of several parts, you know, no? and it only works with these parts. Sorry, I didn't understand the idea of a machine. Uh, 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 what what do you mean by a machine? Uh, are... or, or, or a complex, uh, complex, ah, okay. uh, complex thing. And, a, te um, a technique, you mean, of uh, uh, yeah, drawing yeah, yeah. with the right perspective. Did uh, Barker could solve these uh, perspective problems? Uh, yes. Um, uh, he, he made one picture and put the next picture beside and the next picture beside and then he put it together for for instance eight pictures put around yeah. and uh, uh, these uh, join the, the part that the, joined one of the, another the, the joints were in an angel and yeah. he had to to move it round to make it uh -huh. you understand it's difficult yes. for me to to explain because i don't have the words uh, in English. No problem. Yes, uh, I understand it. That's fine. Mm. So he, he could uh, also not only uh, have, no, he had to solve not the, the perspective problems, but the, the idea of joining with no evidence between the, the parts. Yes. And he had, for instance, this is a very great picture. And this great picture took a lot of material a lot of time to paint it, mm -hmm. a lot of money to make the architecture. So he has find people who gave him the money. Yeah. And people gave him the money only when they thought, okay, we get back our money. I understand. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a complex thing. It's not only art, it's a business. Yes. Yes, yeah? of course. And, and, and... and this is a special moment in history no one, nothing before was mm. like this. It was a picture without forerunner. Mm. And so he could patent it. He took a patent on it. He took yes. uh, uh, like like a, a, a steam uh, engine. Yes. Yeah. It was, a, it, was a, it was a steam engine of art. Yes. Like a machine. He patented. Like a machine. Yes. And he, uh, he was, um, he starts to make his commercialization because uh, uh, he had the idea in 1787. But when did he start uh, uh, the real commercialization related to the idea of building, trying to have the financial support? How many years he got between the idea and to have the uh, building? Well, he started in, uh, uh, he had the patent in 1787, 
-hmm. and built this panorama building you show in the picture in uh, 1792. Uh, this is a complex one too, because this is not only one panorama, these are two panoramas, one big one and one smaller one in the uh, in above of it. And this he did because um, he wanted to have public all the time. But when the picture was seen and mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to have a new one, he, uh, where could he do this? So he built an, he, he painted a new picture in the above panorama. People looked at the down panorama. Then he opened the above panorama mm -hmm. and closed the panorama down and uh, made a new picture there. Because he made every year a new picture because it has to be new. Mm -hmm. it, it's not art for the, uh, for the eternity, it's art for the day. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's art for not a connoisseur, not mm -hmm. a man who understands something about art. It's, a, it's a art for people who read the newspaper. Yes, yeah. regular people, medium class, for example. Yeah. So you, you think that and, he built... Uh, Sorry, go, go ahead, please. No, 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 no. No, please, Stefan, you are the, the doctor today. Please. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't know where to begin and where to stop. Uh, it's a, the invention of the panorama is a complex thing within a historical situation, a special historical situation, and mm -hmm. it makes a machine to see. Mm -hmm. The invention was a machine to see. And I tried, or we tried to explain how the machine works mm -hmm. technically. Yes. how it looks so um beside of the technical things uh there are social things which is the public who paid it who made it how many people painted on it uh who gave the money who earned the money and so on this uh is belonging to this it's not only a piece of art it's a piece of media yes that's uh, great we have a question here from Robert Yarosk. I don't know what what social groups were experiencing the panorama most often. Was it cheap or rather expensive to view it? Uh, I think it was uh, that what we call the bourgeois, uh, the bourgeois. the bourgeois, the not the poorest people, of course mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. and not the uh, uh, not the richest or the noble people. You know, in the 18th century, there were public museums to go for people, but you have to have an invitation or you have to ha have a nobleman. No, it was not public for everyone. Uh, so, and the panorama was the first piece of art where everyone who can afford the entrance fee can go in. You understand? Yes. yes. And what you have to pay the entrance fee. Yes. And it was it was rather expensive, but it was not um, exclusive. Exclusive. Not not exclusive to a special social class. You yes. don't have to be very much educated. You don't have to be very rich. You have to pay your fee, and that's all. And no mm -hmm. one asks you where you come from, where you go to. You have to pay your fee, and you can see the panorama. Yes, this is this this idea is uh, tremendous. You no, know, to have uh, uh, the um, the beginning of a mass medium, but in a such uh, 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 in a such bigger big way. I mean, of course, we could have other uh, mass medium, but why so huge uh, buildings? Etc. Did uh, did you make uh, this question uh, in any moment for you? Why we have in our history a medium like with this kind of dimensions, suburb dimensions? <clears throat> so the panorama was a medium 
in the metropolitans, in the big cities. Okay. So they needed a big public to to get the money. Many people gave a little piece of money to pay the huge amount what the costs. So mm -hmm. not everyone could see a panorama. So the panorama, after that, the panorama have to wander away. So they roll it up and uh, went from town to town to show it a quarter of a year or half a year or so. Uh, could only be seen at, at day uh, mm -hmm. because uh, there was no lighting, lightning, lighting uh, uh, in this time. Could only seen when the weather was good, when it was dark, couldn't be seen because of the uh, the light comes from the roof. Okay. And, uh, and um, uh, we, there was no transportation. This this uh, panorama, this um, canvas, was eight meter or ten meters high, or say eight meters high, and twenty meters long. It weighs several tons with a wow. painting and so on, and has to roll up, put on a horse-driven car, and going from one town to the other was very complicated. You see, yeah. it, it took a rather long time that, um, that the medium found its way, technically, how to function, and uh, how, how, to, how to work in the society, uh, how, uh, uh, what is it, how, 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 Oh, <laughs> I miss the words. Uh, 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 you mean uh, uh, financial exploited by a market, for example? Fi financial, well, technical in the material structure, technical in the transportation, technical in uh, uh, making uh, making um, uh, 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 reclame. Well. Uh, Tell everyone here something to see. You see, yes. putting uh, having uh, having broadsheets and so on. Uh, that you have to learn. You have to understand how to uh, market to market with uh, with the thing. This comes all together, uh, and in in this form, it was a very complicated machinery. Which has to machinery. I don't mean in a in a technical or in a, yes. Uh, it it was a machinery of uh, how it works. Yes, it's a, a idea of complexity. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Idea of a, a complexity between artistical, commercial, uh, uh, developing in in the urban society, the habit to go to to pay to see a, a, a whole uh, view. So, uh, and let me please go. When when it was invented, this was an act of um, creativity. Yes, but people had people. It the panorama was the picture of the horizon which was invented in the 18th century the, the horizon and in the panorama people learned how to see a panorama they couldn't see it from before when people go into the panorama they got seasick and they had to learn how to see this new art of seeing it was a, a school of of seeing yes so, this was in the beginning, and uh, then it has a history, of course. Yes. So we have, like in this picture in the beginning, it's the uh, beginning of 19th century, uh, maybe. Yes, in Boulevard Montmartre yeah. in Paris. Yes, of course. We, we, and here we have these two rotundas. Is that correct, yes. Mr. Stefan? Two rotundas, of course, because in one, the picture was painted, and in the yeah. other, was was seen uh, Barker had it uh, on one on the other and there yes. was two pictures the twin twin rotundas no twin, twin rotundas in one you could see the picture in the other the next picture was painted and yes that changed yes and I love this uh, uh, this image because depicts exactly the 
the environment of the when the the hot, uh, the panoramas start so the building uh, it's, it's still on on land there is uh, a kind of pre urban city in the way we know today it's not uh, in the end of the 19th century we know we everybody knows that paris would be a very different city but the the panoramas were there uh, it's a kind of evidence of the growing of the city, no? So the panorama, it's, it, wh where would you uh, point the panorama in the history? In the pre or post-modernity, in the, in the sense of modernity, no, in the uh, academic sense of modernity, but in the way of the... Just, just on, the, uh, on the change from pre to post. Just... <laughs> Just in the middle. <laughs> Just in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and the idea of having it on the middle in this. Uh, can you explain to to everyone who is uh, watching us uh, <clears throat> uh, if the panoramas uh, we have like a, a, a whole century of uh, he was in activity before going to this dark side of history. This and is what, not true. This is please, not true. It please. was a, in general scene, it was a whole century from 1787 to 1910 or First World War. Yeah. But uh, the first period when uh, was to the middle of the century and then it got forgotten. And after this, after the um, 1870s uh, German French war, mm -hmm. it started again. And it started because they found a new way to financial uh, the problems or to, to have the to f finance these things with uh, um, what's called uh, if you give uh, shares. Uh, yes. You have the way to support, sponsor, have profits on yes. exploiting it. So the panorama, the steps were panorama, diorama, moving panorama. Then came the invention of photography, mm. you know, and then came the illustrated newspapers. The mm. illustrated newspapers, for instance, in the 18th century made an end to the panoramas because the panoramas was the pictures for the newspaper readers. And when the newspapers themselves have pictures, no one was interested in panoramas any longer. So it, it went down. And then it came to a new... Uh, uh, cycle, uh, cycle, no uh, era, a new decade. You know, to, of... to a new era, because th then it was uh, a medium of um, patriotism, chauvinism, and so mm. on in the second part of the uh, 19th century. So for German, German, French war, and so on, uh, 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 to show this or or, or whatever. And uh, this came to an end in the uh, great exhibit 1900 exhibition in Paris. And after that, uh, in this time, the cinema was invented and made the panorama dead. And so if you see the panorama, it's an up and down. And uh, you have to explain why it goes up and why yeah. it goes down. And it goes down because something others is goes up. You know, yes, and you have to you. It's uh, related to, to other mediums, and, and this is in in my bad English, very difficult to explain how this uh, works. Yes, and uh, could you point the difference between these two uh, nineteen eras, uh, one from the eighteen to eight thirty, and the other that starts on the eight seventh? If I uh, 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 understood, uh, understood. What's the difference between these two? Uh, is there something that is significant? 
Yes, in the in the first part, it was uh, the personality of one artist who was a master of the panorama. He has some servants who worked with him and helped him, and mostly has to finance this project by himself. In the second uh, time, in the second half of the century, there was mostly a group of uh, panorama painters. You see on these pictures, you see how many people are working here, and the own the painter have no no brush in his hand. The painter is the man on the on the platform. You see, the, uh, and he has no brush in his hand. He he shows where to paint. Yes. So, uh, do you think so that this, this this must be organized? And the panoramas has been broader, and the ideas of the panoramas don't come from the painter. Uh, the ideas for the panoramas come comes from the people who gave the money. Yes. Yeah. So, so they it's... wanted to they wanted to do a business. It was just it looks as the as was as was it the same. The, it, the one is a panorama, the other is a panorama, but it was something very special, a new one in the second half. Yeah, as I understand. So in the, in the beginning, it could be more related to the old way of, um, not old in a bad way, but the, the traditional way of uh, producing art and the second uh, panorama era in the 1870s. It was more involved with uh, industry, a cultural history, exploited by businessmen. Could we? Uh, ex it, no, it was. It was in the first half. It was the self understanding of the artist who made this. He was the origin. And in the second half, it was not uh, the artist. It was uh, the the financial group. The company, for example. The company. The company. Yeah. You understand? Uh, so, in the second half, there is nothing creative. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's in nothing the... creative. In the, in the first half, people try and try to make it good, and uh, and and so on. In the second half, it was just industrial industrial painting. Yes. You know, people did it by hand because you couldn't print it. Today, Yadagar uh, uh, Sisi uh, do, does panoramas which are 20 or 30 meters high. And they are not painted, they are printed. They are done at... Uh, uh, it looks like a panorama, but it's, of course, it's not a panorama. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah, it's... Uh, it's, it's a... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a the the first the second and the third period of panoramas or yeah the, the fifth panorama in between it uh, the russian uh, uh the soviet union made lots of panoramas uh, uh, soviet union and china made uh, lots of panoramas uh, in the 30 and 40 years and, uh, oh yes and, uh, yes and some of some of them you can still visit today no yeah that's great and um uh, it's, it's still uh, making the difference between these two. Uh, how was the popularity of uh, the panorama in the second? In the I didn't understand this. In the second... Oh, sorry. In the second moment, in the second period of uh, upping and growing of panorama on the seventies. How pop? How was? How popular was it? Very, very popular, but. Uh, um... It was very popular, but not uh, profitable. It was profitable, of course, but uh, it was no one thought it was art. Mm. You understand? So it was uh, well in the in the first half of the century, the people who wanted to, who weren't but wanted to be educated, mm -hmm. and in the second uh, century, was the people who who weren't. Ah, okay. Uh, be educated. You, you know, in the second, it was a mass medium. It was the uh, the um, the milkmaid and the uh, the soldier and people like that. 
uh, going to the panorama. Mm -hmm. so, so in the second time, it was a real mass medium for the uneducated. Yes. There's nothing to under, there's nothing to know, nothing to understand, and uh, to to see a, um, a picture of of uh, a battle of the uh, uh, French German War. Uh, you have not to be informed. You have to only be to be a patriot or, uh, or so to see to look at this. Uh, it's just for the stupid. Yes. I would like uh, to show a picture from uh, a, a fo Fox Terrain. Fox Terrain? It's a. Fauterrain. Fauterrain, I'm sorry. Fauterrain. Yeah. Can you explain to, the, to people here what's the Fauterrain technique in panoramas, like we see here in this image? Well, the panorama is a platform where the people stand to look, and then is a picture, and in between is a gap. And first, there was nothing in the gap. You couldn't see the, the just nothing. Here, you can see, not see uh, the, 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 the heaven, gap itself. And you don't see the gap. But if you look into the gap, they build it three-dimensional. Three so the gap was not painted, but in three-dimension made a picture in three dimension. So for instance, um, um, two men carrying a third man in a in a battle, a wounded man on a uh, on a I don't know what is well uh, carrying uh, a wounded man. Yes. And and uh, the front man is was painted and uh, the back man was real. Oh uh, really and, uh, and, and the wounded man was half painted and half real or oh, uh, in, in three dimensions. Uh, so to to uh, that it was impossible to see where the picture ends. This was the idea to show uh, or to to uh, to make it uh, unseeable where the picture ends. For instance, on this picture, the sand in in bef before and the um, anchor is this, is this name uh, anchor uh, anchor yes uh, anchor. These are three, three dimensional and the bit lighter sand was painted so this, this is the painted this, and this, this is, is the painted, real this is real real sand yes. and uh, it was so made that you can't see where the picture begins and where the picture ends so th this is the folk folk terrain so I, falsch, falsches, uh, uh, um, falsches, uh, false uh, false uh, false false terrain false false Foster her. Yeah. Foster. Yes. So the idea of having because mixed was, it. Yes. Please. It was it wasn't real. It was just art too. It, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, and I, I, of course I can imagine that not every panorama building has his own foster her. But Foster her. Uh. For to her, but uh, but the most uh, luxurious one has no. Uh, uh, did the Fox Terrain uh, was? Uh, if can you give our, our uh, dimension of us? How popular was it? The the idea of increasing of the panorama experience. Did you understand? This 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 photon came in the second period. Only the, the second Panora period. Yes. But well, mm. it they, they tried to do it in the 1840s with uh, partly built ships and so on. Uh, they tried to do this, but it was uh, it was everywhere in the second in the second period. And uh, um, Everywhere, you mean that became a like a, of uh... in in the second period there was there were no panoramas without photo. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So every even the not so luxurious ones has his own photo hand. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, well, they played a panorama for 
for a period. This is the summertime or the, the, the light parts of the year. Mm -hmm. And the next year, they changed it. So, for instance, a, a, a four tons heavy canvas shown in Moscow went to South America by ship. And then they it for a year, it was okay to rebuild a new photoran. Mm. So, yes. Sometimes you show this picture you show from the Panorama Mess deck. This is yes. a, a, a this is a, it's only sand, you see. Yeah. And sometimes there were cannons and uh, uh, dead soldiers and uh, dead horses and uh, um, uh, uh, half uh, half a train uh, stood in the fauteuil. And here it's only sand. So you sometimes they were simple, sometimes they were difficult. Yes, uh, we have uh, Mo Wee saying that the Panorama Mesdag in Holland is amazing. Yes, there is real sand and painted sand. You hardly can see the difference. So the idea of have this kind of illusion is so strong in, in the whole panorama and also in the folks to hunt, no? Yeah. That's that's great. And, and uh, the difficult uh, there are some more old panoramas who had old photographs, uh, for instance, in uh, Lutzen. The difficulty is dirt and everything falls on the photograph mm. and uh, spoils it within the years, you know. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you, you have to do it uh, nearly every year new to make it illusionary. I understand. So to keep maintain, keep uh, in this kind of great illusion, you have to yeah. every year. Uh, yes. I don't hear you. Sorry, sorry. I have problems on my microphone. That's the last episode. Oh, it's coming uh, tired. <laughs> my microphone. So, uh, do you think the idea of uh, uh, of the increasing with this kind of new effects was a way of bringing again the median with a kind of novelty to new people? Yes, and... yes, yes. But it was nothing new. There was no novelty. It was just a, a bit more, you know, a, a bit more, nothing new. Yes. Yes, understand. The panorama was very new, but all what comes after the invention. So everything was old. After the first panorama Barker made in, mm -hmm. say, the first all round panorama, 360 degrees in 1792, mm -hmm. every, every next panorama was old. There was nothing yeah. new on it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, still talking about the difference between these two uh, periods of uh, exploding panoramas in 19th century. One of the main uh, themes from the paintings was the battle scenes, the wars, uh, scenes related to the war. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, would, I would like to talk a little bit about this special, uh, uh, about this theme. Do you think that uh, these uh, battle scenes were more popular in the first first round or in the second round of the panorama? Or it's uh, irrelevant, this question? They have all it's, the same paper. It's, mo it's more, more or less irrelevant because uh, the scenes don't relate. It was a scene a newspaper reader wanted to know. So he wants to know how the battle looks like he read in the newspaper. And he wanted to know how Macau or Rio de Janeiro looks like he read in the newspaper because the British, uh, uh, the British Navy or the British colonialism uh, had their, uh, they, um, you know, it was a theme of the day which mm -hmm. could be seen or which would be illustrated in the panorama. And this was 
more or less in the first half, in the first period, it was actualities. And in the second half, there was, for instance, the crucifixion, mm. uh, Christ's crucifixion or, uh, or uh, Rome in the uh, time of Nero or, or, or whatever. Uh, it was it was not so much actualities it was national chauvinism to yes. show a battle uh, and, and uh, do, well the prussians uh, had victory on the french and this wanted we wanted to see there was nothing no new or nothing interesting it was just uh, well for stupid for the yes and and also uh, stefan we have uh, the invention of photography and this commercial exploration so the idea of uh, bringing the word of the exact word of rio de janeiro macau as you said uh, also the photography was part of uh, developing and showing the word to audience so uh, before photography uh, the audience could not uh, reach or know the whole world in spite of being in a panorama but before the photography i think that this paper of uh, vis uh, uh, visuality exploration was related to photography so in the second period the idea of uh, actuality maybe going uh, 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 more or more uh, less or, or less relevant. I don't know. I, I'm just uh, thinking around what you said. Why in this second peri period maybe actuality was not so popular comparing with the first period? Uh, yes. Well. Daguerre, who invented the photography, or one of the inventors of the photography, was first panorama painter. Then he invented, <laughs> then he invented the diorama. And when yeah. his diorama burned down, uh, it was a year when of he of, of the invention of the photography. It yeah. took 20 years that a photography, well, first you need five minutes to make a photography or um, hours or, maybe or, 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 or longer so it took i i think the first um instant photography in a few seconds or uh, uh, less than a few seconds was in the 1870 years so it took it was not only the invention and then the panorama was gone so it took a long time yeah uh, it took a long time and um, um the quality of photography wasn't so good that in the 1880s uh, you could have, uh, for instance, photo panorama. I have mm -hmm. a photograph panorama from the 1880s. It's uh, it's it's black and white. It's not colored, and mm -hmm. so on. You you understand? So yeah. it was more precise in the detail, but mm -hmm. less spectacular. So it took always a time. Uh, when it over overtook the the before media yes and, uh, i i would like to uh, just uh, change it in, in, uh, we are here in the last minutes uh, talking about the difference of the period i would like to take this point that you get from daguerre and talk a little bit more from his uh, uh, diorama I, I will show a picture here that I have add to a stream. Yes, here. Uh, this is uh, the building, the diorama building from the 30s, 1830s, no? Is that yeah. correct? And then uh, we have inside the one of the, the, the idea of the uh, diorama. I will show the pictures and then we comment, okay? Yeah. And how we have here the the plan, the section of this diorama. So please, Stefan, could you talk a little bit more to the diorama from da and Daguerre also to to us? So go back one one picture. Go back. 
No, of one, one more. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. no. This yes. one. Okay. Uh, the picture. Show where the picture is. I can. I can. Here. Here. No. 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 The there, one picture there, here, and then the other here. No. No, I think this is a pic. The the outer. Ah, ah, here. Sorry. Here is a picture. Okay. And in the middle, there the spectator or spectators are in the round. Yes, here in the, in the round. This, in the round. So, okay. And uh, you see, you can see in one direct, in three direction, and the, it circles around. The the viewer circles from one tunnel to the next tunnel. Okay. And the picture itself was painted on two sides, the, the side before and the side behind. Uh -huh. And uh, first you put your light on the front mm -hmm. and you see the day. And then you move the light some slowly to the back and showed it from behind. And you see the night or the other way around, I don't know. Uh, so it was the first time you could show time in a picture. It moves from morning to night. This was the, the, the first effect. The second effect diorama he invented uh, several years later, um, he used complementary colors. So he painted on the front uh, a church you see in the church no one was in and on the back side of the panorama monks several monks was painted and they wow. were painted in, they were painted in green so you look from before and you don't see them and when you give red light on the green monks they appear black and That's... so it seems and and you put one after the other with the red light and so it seems that the monk, the 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 group of monks, are moving through the through through the church. <laughs> so he had own, not only uh, a change through the day time from morning to the night. So he had movement in the room, and this was a new invention of the diorama. This was uh, the first time that you could show in one picture the movement. And this was because the panorama didn't move. In the panorama, they made nothing is moving. I see, I see a young man knocking at the door, uh, a baker uh, bringing bringing rolls in the morning, or the milkman. And I, I work around the panorama, and after twenty minutes, I come back, and the the young man knocking at the door is still knocking at the door. Nothing has happened, so no time. So I see there is no time. I have to do where, where where can I do time? Where can I where can I show time? And the diorama is the answer of a picture which don't, which don't move. This one in the uh, in the diorama you could show where time is going by. Yes, and uh, it seems that uh, Daguerre make uh, uh, make lots of money with that. Do you have any information how uh, was how profitable was the diorama for him, or in a social way make makes him with a great status uh, 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 related to, to the the society, the French society. Uh, I have no idea uh, about uh, how much money. He had two dioramas, one in Paris and one in London. And ah, he, okay. changed, he changed the pictures from one to the other. But the mm. costs were very high. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. He was a very rich man. I, I don't believe this. He, he, he got rich when, he, when the French um, government... Uh, bought his invention of uh, uh, photography. Yeah. He, there he got uh, lots of money. Yes. We have here a, a question uh, related to the uh, second moment of Panorama. Uh, how did you, uh, Mr. Otterman, relate 
the second mo uh, movement of panorama with uh, European nationalism. Yeah, it was the art of nationalism. It was the art. It was a kind of reference of bringing. Yes, yes. Uh, but and uh, and the difficulty was, you have a national panorama for the national pride of the German. Mm -hmm. And this you have shown in Germany, and no one wants to see it any longer. And mm -hmm. you want to bring it to South America, and no one was interested in German patriotism. Yes. You know, this was a difficulty. So you have to find themes which can be international. And therefore, they did cr several, several, several crucifixions and stuff like that. Uh, uh, people uh, who, uh, which is all, which is international to the Roman Catholics or whatever, you understand. So mm -hmm. you you couldn't you couldn't paint a, a panorama of the French German War in mm -hmm. the 1870s and show it in Germany and show the same panorama in yes. France. It's impossible because the viewpoint was German and in French. The French panorama, the viewpoint was French. You know? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> so the idea um, of uh, political. Uh, so I will, the politicians and the government, uh, I think that they, in the very beginning, realize how how was the potential of panorama. Since Napoleon Bonaparte uh, had had a plan to paint, paint, uh, to paint some, we have also that in German the very famous one in Berlin, uh, oh, Oliver Grau on his book wrote about this. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, uh, no. Oh, sorry, the word was here. Just one second. I'll take the book here, please. One second. It was a panorama of Anton von Berner. Sedan panorama von Anton von Werner. Uh, sorry? It was a Sedan panorama von Anton von Werner. Yes. Do you know this book, The Art Virtual no, from I Oliver Graf? No, 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 no. You don't know? Oh, no. so you are in many pages here. You, Stefan, I, I mean. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, uh, sorry. Do you remember the name of it? Because I couldn't listen. Uh, Anton von Werner's Panorama von Zidane. Yes, Zidane is that, yeah. exactly. Panorama it was, it, Zidane. It, it was the most famous one by the Germans. The most famous battle. But ah, the Battle of Zidane. Yeah, in the in the 1870s war of the French and the Germans. And what you told about Napoleon, Napoleon was the only one who thought about to make it an instrument of uh, propaganda. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the second half of the century in Germany, it was an instrument of the of propaganda, uh, mm -hmm. but it was not officially paid. It mm. it uh, it swam on the on the waves of propaganda, but it mm -hmm. wasn't paid by the government. Napoleon yeah. thought about paying for it, making propaganda, but he didn't. He yes. he, he he wanted to do several of his uh, battles, uh, but he didn't. And do you have any notice that uh, one government that made official investment on panoramas? Uh, no, I have. I know that. Uh, at the World Exhibition 1900, there were several uh, industrial firms mm -hmm. uh, who paid for panoramas. For instance, uh, um, big, um, what's the name? If you have ships going uh, along the ship. Transatlantic. And so Trans on. Trans-Siberian. They, they, or, or, 
yeah, or for instance, uh, the oil companies paid for Panorama and yeah. so on to to show their business and to show their uh, they paid for it. But I haven't heard that uh, a government have, has well, not a German capital. I don't know. The German government has paid for uh, such. Okay, know. we. Uh... But it was, of course, it, of course, it was a chauvinistic. Uh, uh, Hurra patriotism uh, pictures. Yes, but be, but because they did it because people paid for it and not other the the public paid for it and not the uh, maker of it. So we have here our luxurious uh, viewer Martin Gilbert. Sorry, Martin, about uh, my uh, English. Uh, I don't know if luxurious is related about to our English. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so uh, thank you, Martin, to who is uh, an English speaker, an actual English speaker. <laughs> Stefan, Stefan and Haimo, greeting, greetings from the UK. Really enjoyed this episode of Panoramas. Forever learning of, on this endless subject. And after he said, I have pieced things together tonight, like a meteorama. Okay. <laughs> what is a meteorama, please, uh, uh, Stefan? Taking the this uh, Martin the Gilbert. Miriama, the meteorama is a uh, are several cards bound together to a horizon. There's one horizon cut in several little cards, and mm -hmm. the pieces. At, at the edge passes together so you could change the little cards from here to here and the miriyama is I, i don't know how many million possibilities to show a landscape from these cards mm. yeah you have no picture for it it's difficult to explain it no uh, i don't have from miriyama no sorry it's it's a uh, it's a play it's, it's a, a play it's a, it's a play for, for not for children perhaps well perhaps for children mm. i don't know It never gave it at a at a big in a big scale. It was uh, the cards was this size or this size. Uh, yes, that like, that like, like 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 playing cards, playing cards with pieces of landscape you put together in different uh, and you can make your own landscape. It's a bit stupid, but uh, yeah. uh, it was an interesting idea. But, uh, yes, not 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 very far going. But I think that uh, Martin pointed this kind of uh, different um, innovation with uh, Panorama. We have already talked about uh, Diorama, but there yeah. are many others. Uh, yeah. Sorry, before that, we have to say that the word Panorama was invented because of the Panorama, no? Yeah, it's it's a terminus technicus for the panorama. But before that was a kind of uh, invented word. I don't know the name in English. Uh, was invented word uh, that was to baptize the median. No. Yeah. And then afterwards, it becomes a very uh, natural word in many different languages. Yes. Not only in in English. In, panorama is an international word. It, international no. word. But so in the every, median in every language. Yes, has the the word panorama or the and mm. also the idea of panorama, but essentially not was the idea, no 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 not the idea of panorama. What we talk about panoramas, these round yes. buildings, <laughs> but but the panorama, this round building and this round picture gave the name for for nature yeah nature comes behind art not the the art co not comes this is interesting you see the experience of a nature a panoramic nature comes after the experience of the panorama as art so mm -hmm. and it took um 30 years from uh, 1792 2820, I say, a panorama was a panorama, this round thing. And after that, it became more and more um, a landscape. 
a real landscape. And today a panorama is everything, what is just broad or just a panorama of politics. What is a panorama of politics? or a panorama of, of whatever yes. it, it, today it's a word for everything what is rather big or uh, or yeah, somehow uh, deep, a, a deep change, or, yeah. or whatever yeah. yes we have but here is, not sorry no please please stefan no i think this is interesting that's an invention becomes nature mm -hmm. yeah this no one would think everyone thinks the the experience of a panorama is is an experience people has since several thousand years no they don't have the experience of a panorama they have the experience of a panorama after inventing a panorama not before yeah, yeah. so no one no 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 roman antique roman would know what a panorama is where well, he could go and look around but he has no idea on what a panorama is so he has to experience the horizon he has to experience around and so on and this was important this was one of my important or for me important ideas that uh uh that uh how people look is history and not nature. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's really good. We have another question uh, uh, for Robert Yarotsk. I don't know. Sorry, Robert. Uh, so, Stefan, can you talk a little bit more about the relation between panoramas and the way people see the world around them? That's what we're talking at. How did people look at landscapes before and after? And how does it connect to city space? I hope. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could be English. Yes, of course you can, <laughs> man. Please. <laughs> this is uh, very difficult to explain. Uh, or it's not difficult to explain, but it's difficult for me to say. Um, we don't know. We just we can just get, and the panorama is a piece where we can have a little bit of the idea how it was before panorama. We only have examples in art. What was what, what pictures, landscape pictures, for instance, before panorama? What was landscape pictures after? And what is the difference between a panorama or a part of a panorama and a photography? This we have to put. So I think today we know the world behind us. I don't know if people in the 18th century would know that there is a world behind them, but uh, it's, uh, <laughs> not, it's uh, not right when I say this, but in the, this direction. Yes. Uh, yes, I can understand. So coming back uh, with Martin Gilbert idea of Miriorama, we talk about the diorama, di uh, diorama, and there are many, many different uh, uh, kinds of uh i i'm here with erki hutamus uh, yeah. book did you did you watch his interview here in flick and flow stefan yes and I read oh it. that's great that's great <laughs> so i i i just pointed some of them like uh, polyorama kineorama cyclorama cosmorama phosphororama uh edofusicon which is before one of the previous uh, Edo Fuzicon, Naturorama, pa Padorama, Georama, Pantomime, Paneorama, uh, Poliorama, Miriorama, oh, and many others, others and others, Amas that are really exhausted, ex show it in Erkis Fabulous book. What but happens? 
but I'm not sure that people who invented these names would know what they mean with it. You know? No, I think <laughs> they that just... they know what they mean, but they know that they were kind of using the attractional uh, power of the name in other Orama. instance. Yes, yeah. Orama. O Orama. Uh, sometimes uh, these Oramas has nothing to do with the panorama. It's just something else. It's just big or, it's, for instance, city Rama or Confortorama. This is a wash, washing machine. Confortorama <laughs> is a washing, a washing machine. And is the uh, Kaiser Panorama, no? It's nothing related with Panorama. No, no. It's just stereoscopic photographies. Yes. <laughs> But some of them are. So I would like to show to audience and uh, ask you to talk a little bit about the Colosseum, which does, doesn't have the suffix orama, but it's completely uh, has the idea of more than 360 surround. It's uh, a little bit more ambitions in uh, considering the 1820s and the 1830s. Can you explain a little bit about the Colosseum? Well, on the right side of this picture, you see a scaffold or what the name is. And this is above the St. Paul's Cathedral when they made the ball and cross new. And uh, they had the scaffold. And at this moment, the artist took the, um, took the moment to sit on this scaffold. Do you see a small hut on the scaffold? Go down. Go down. Yeah, this is a hut. And in there... The painter sits and he painted London from there. He couldn't do this only because of the renovation of Ball and Cross of St. Paul's. And um, he made so many pictures. I, don't, I, I forgot, I think. Um, 300 he, drawings. More, I think. Uh, more. He needed, yeah. he, he needed um, well, he first took all these in, in square. He, he, he put the horizon in squares and put little uh, pictures. And these pictures, he needed a, a new built car for it to go, uh, to go to the places to see the details. Okay. And then they built it in a huge, a huge Colosseum, a huge new building. Mm -hmm. And Colosseum is Colosseum is Colosseum in Rome. And yeah. uh, uh, therefore it's, it's not a, It's a panorama inside the Colosseum, and um, I will show you this, this the staircase up there. Yes, you show the staircase. It was the first um, elevator in history. In this, yeah. uh, uh, in, instead of a staircase, up to go there, um, you see, uh, you see where the painters sit in this uh, in these things above there. You see these uh, these square things here. You mean, or on the go, right side? No, go 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 to the left side. Left side. Up up up. Up up up. Ah, up, here. Uh, no no no. On right, more left. More, more left. Left. Uh, left. I'm sorry. Up 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 up. up, up, up. Here. You see, in there uh, yeah. the painters are sitting. Yeah, there was not yeah, in there the painter city. So go up, up, up. Yes, up, to, the, to, yeah. the, to the to the right side, right Or, side, uh, right side, and up, up, up. Yeah. There the painters are sitting. You see here, are paint in there are painters. Yeah, on this on this scaffold. Okay, it was huge, and it has the first time no, no. Um, It, it had a painted sky. No panorama mm -hmm. before had a painted sky. It was uh, the panoramas before has uh, um, a roof on on uh, overhead, and here yeah. you you could see you could see the sky, but you can't see the the window where the light comes in because there. Uh, yes, well, there is a roof, and, a, a piece and, of roof and, here. And there is no, there is no uh, footer. Uh -huh. Yeah, but you see, 
a piece of the uh, St. Paul's Cathedral. This and this makes that you can't see uh, the the up, uh, the under part of the picture because yeah. Um, well, I have no. Uh, yes, yeah, if okay. you are if you are here, position on on here on this point. Yeah. Uh, because of genau. this structure, genau. you can't see the the. Genau, you can't see this. You can't see that. You can see yes. just from and, here. And, and and these white things are a bit of kind of photoron, which uh, uh, hide, hides the underneath. Ah, okay, yeah. perfect. It, we have it, it. It shows a piece of the. Um, of the St. Paul's uh, Cathedral, it's not photoran. It it took at is it the 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 roof ah, the of ceiling the the, the ceiling the, of St. Yeah. Paul. Ah, I didn't know that. Yes, it looks like it was made in glass, for example. Yeah. It uh, seems to have. So this image, it's a kind of uh, so uh, uh, this image belongs to a moment that the Colosseum is not ready already. It maybe it's some just kind before, of prep just before. just before. Yes, I have here this famous uh, image from. It looks like the. Yeah. It, it's the bird's eye view, but the person it's it's here, mm -hmm. and and was more or less what the the spectator could could see. From the high top of the Colosseum, yeah. no. Mm. And the Colosseum has more than a panorama. It has a, a, a garden, and so on. It, it was attached attractions to the Colosseum. You know, it was not only a panorama; it was an um, entertaining uh, center or stuff like that. Ah, uh, okay. That was a kind of regular, the idea of uh, like the shopping centers today, the the the, the ma mall shoppings that people go to cinemas to watch movies mm. there and then has, go to a restaurant. The panoramas has also this kind of uh, uh, galleries, uh, mm. park before. It's a kind of whole week, uh, whole afternoon. Yeah, oh, oh, but it was uh, it was it was not a, it was not a good business. I think they failed. The Colosseum. Yeah, yeah. It was much too expensive to build this. It was not a, a wooden structure, or a, it was a stone structure. The building and all mm -hmm. this, and the the picture was huge. It was one of the most much much greater than. Barker's panorama, and uh, it it took too much money. It didn't play the money in, you know. It was uh, there was another picture. Uh, what was it? London at night, and not uh, a second. And then they have to close down. Uh, yes, and, they, and, and they didn't earn money with it. It was they tried. They tried to do something new, but it was not new enough. It was just greater, you know. You know? Mm -hmm. It was no no new idea. It was just greater and more expensive, and uh, uh, nothing special on it. It was impressive, but nothing nothing new. And uh, there were also there was also another Colosseum from the same company in New York, no, in Broadway. Or not? I'm making mistake. Do you have information about that? It, not from the same company. Uh, well, uh, I don't remember, but I think uh, the 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 New York panorama was uh, uh, they showed panoramas of uh, Robert Barker or ah, okay his son, or of his son. It was not yeah. this one. No, no, this was unique. This was unique. Okay. This was unique, and uh, uh, there was no possibility to show it uh, uh, at another place because yeah. it was so uh, huge, so big. Yeah, that's great. And also, and, and so and so and so high. You see, the platform is uh, 
I think, more than 20 meters high. Yes, I have the notation here. Oh, no, and don't have any more. More than 20 meters high. So ha they have to build a mechanical elevator, you know, yeah. uh, as you said, the first one in history. That's amazing history. <laughs> Colosseo is fantastic. Um, so talking about other kinds of uh, different uh, panoramas, like these move panoramas. Yeah, uh, this is a panorama Aki uh, would know. <laughs> this is a movie panorama. This is a panorama showing the uh, uh, the the Missi uh, uh, a journey down the Mississippi or up the Mississippi, uh, uh, the sides of the river, and so for several several hundred or more feet long or meters long. I don't know. Sometimes they told uh, three miles long the canvas, and it was rolled from one side to the other side. It was not round. Yes, you know. It from from the one roll to the other, and uh, uh, there must be a lecturer in in the front uh, um, there, the lecturer, and he was explaining what the people have to see. And it looks like a cinema or theater, and the rolls of the panorama are behind the uh, uh, just one picture, and some of these moving panoramas have different pictures one picture next picture next picture uh, but some of them are uh, the pictures the one place to the next place is gliding so that you think uh, you're sitting in a you're sitting in a boat and uh, looking at the river side uh, or you're sitting in a, a train and looking out of the window and uh, so yes so the we see that the Colosseum is from 1829. Uh, so uh, there was inside this first. Uh, oh my WhatsApp! It's terrible today. Can you hear my point or, or something noisy from my WhatsApp message from here or not? I heard ping, 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 ping. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going up today. Because it was supposed not to to, to ring. Sorry about that, Stefan. Uh, so the Colosseum was in the first period of, but in the second uh, uh, period, there are uh, they are this kind of different way of showing the panorama idea, like the moving panorama, etc. Uh, so the question is. Do you know where this kind of different uh, way of panoramas or the using of the word panoramas uh, started? By the way, which decade? Um, the German word is Wandelpanorama or Pleorama, and it was. It, it was invented in Germany and it showed uh, a, a, a boat driving uh, in the Gulf of Neapel and seeing Italy. It was on the right side and on the left side. You see this uh, and you, in the middle you sit in a boat and uh, uh, see this. It was invented in Germany from the, from the man who made the uh, Brandenburger Tor in Berlin. And uh, no, the sun. The son of the main guy, and it was these moving panoramas were especially popular in America, mm. and from America they came back to Europe because uh, of immigration people. Mm. There, so uh, so European people wanted to know how is it in America, and they wanted to get information on America. And uh, therefore, this was American moving panoramas coming back to Europe was a very good uh, information for people who wanted to emigrate to the uh, new world. Ah, okay. Yes. So also because the United States, we have like this, it's a more geographical 
bigger country, I mean. We have this yeah. kind of river, Mississippi River, which is very important from the... Yeah. In, so it's connected. So there are something that goes together, the idea of big river, big country, big uh, screens. No, maybe... Well, well, the America is the country of moving. Go west. Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> and this, this idea of moving is in the moving panorama. It's not... It's difficult to explain, but this is the this is the the soul of the moving panorama is go west. Mm -hmm. yeah? This yeah. Uh, American feeling of uh, uh, going to new um, new places. Yeah, that's great. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking to Stefan Otterman and talking about his tremendous book, The panorama that he wrote in the eight, 1980. Sorry about it. I cover my books with plastic, not to damage them, so they are reflex. It's a tremendous book, fully illustrated, with plenty information about panoramas in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in German, in England, France, United States. So there are too many information about that. And when I read, I was uh, really curious about the Brazilian Rio de Janeiro panorama, which I have here a facsimile from the uh, uh, Brazilian book from Instituto Moreira Salles, a great book uh, related to panorama, but more uh, involved with uh, photographic, photographic panoramas. But uh, inside this book, there was this uh, facsimile of Rio de Janeiro panorama from the Robert Barker's uh, Panorama Laser Square. It wasn't, I suppose, uh, in that time in 1823, not Barker's anymore, but it was his original rotunda the Rio de Janeiro panorama. So when I met Stefan Otterman uh, three years, uh, three weeks ago, just talking and knowing each other, I commented with him with about his this panorama, and he said, "Oh, maybe I can discover something." So I would like to know, Stefan, if you discover from Brazilian uh, audience something about this. Rio de Janeiro pan pa panorama. Well, uh, um, I found uh, in Germany German uh, uh, German articles on this panorama. Uh, I didn't know that it uh, went to Rio de Janeiro. It uh, was it in Rio de Janeiro. I don't know. Uh, I just read about this English panorama, and I read about some other panoramas that had been. Uh, uh, especially from Austria, uh, people going there and making uh, panoramas or cosmoramas, uh, another form of panorama, cosmoramas of Brazil, and um, what else? Um, I think the well, I, I sent it to you. There are few scattered uh, things, so I don't know. It's just uh, well. Yes, but but I don't know nothing about Panama's shown in Brazil. Ah, okay, uh, okay, because I don't have the newspapers here and I don't speak Portuguese or, or whatever. No? Yes, we have a very special rotunda in Rio de Janeiro uh, in the in the end of nineteenth uh, century, and there is this original. Uh, 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 panorama painting from the 1823 that was presented in, in Laser, Laser Square. So uh, the idea, as I, I uh, uh, was, the contest, the situation on Brazil in that moment that Brazil was uh, just made independent from the Portugal, and one of the most the the first 
mot uh, cultural motivation that the new government made was to to ask and to pay from a panorama to show to the english audience there so it it reveals it shows how important was the panorama in mass in and the idea of communication you no know? that that was a, a kind of political uh, importance of panorama so it's a part that brazil goes through the history of panorama so um we have been talking with many things uh, i have almost all my points i have been talking about just before to talk about the contemporary panoramas i would like to uh, see some of the uh, universal exposition by pa uh, moving panoramas and oramas there I will show a picture okay so ladies and gentlemen we are at the beginning of 20th century in Paris and we have here uh, a very uh, special exposition related to the idea of have gigantic uh, audio visual and uh, experience there so uh, this is the lumiere's brothers lumiere screen with fifth uh, screen with 21 meters high and 18 long and now so we have in the same exposition some of moving panoramas that we talked in the Erki Hutamus uh, interview in Flickr and Flow in the third episode. But I would like to, Mr. Stefan, Stefan, talk a little bit about this uh, special world fair that a phenomenon of panorama happened there, no? Yeah. It was the high point, the high uh, point, and the last, the last, as we say in Germany, Schwanengesang, uh, which is means uh, the last words of panorama, uh, the loudest and last words of panorama, and uh, this. Uh, 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 no, what is a cinerama? It's a, 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 a projection, a projection panorama. Uh, and it was projection panoramas, huge moving panoramas. The, the uh, thing before the Trans Siberian uh, was uh, sponsored by uh, uh, the Trans Siberian company, and uh, people on the right side sitting in wagons, in uh, uh, train wagons, and on the left side uh, the scenery of uh, Siberia roads and. Um, from one side to the other, and uh, they can make the the journey to from Moscow to Peking uh, uh, in the panorama. And uh, the cinerama, the next one, and this one um, uh, uh, is the old idea of panorama in a new technical medium of cinema. Uh, it's uh, it's an, an old an old wine in use shoes or uh, uh, um, one could say it's uh, it didn't work so uh, panorama cinema never works i i saw one but it's um, not interesting before when a panorama uh, 360 degree panorama is moving um uh, most of it you wouldn't see it's behind you. So for, for instance, you can make a, a, a movie, a James Bond movie, uh, in, uh, in um, a 360 degree panorama, uh, you wouldn't see the action because it's behind you. You're always looking in the wrong direction. Uh, okay. And uh, this is the, the machine where they uh, uh, put, made uh, the well they couldn't make one one um, cinema they have to do in this case three cinemas 
at the same time to pro project three cinemas in three directions. That, uh, you mean uh, cinematographers? Yeah. Cinematographers, yeah. Uh, this is the, the camera for it, or three cameras then put together for one panorama. Cinerama. Okay. Cinerama. Mm. And then we have here the Mariorama. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, this was a, um, yes, it was a real uh, steamer which uh, goes up and down by these uh, hydraulic elements as you it was the huge thing uh, 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 mr langhans in germany invented 80 years before it was the same but much much in, in langhans had a small boat and he has a real ship with many people on it and uh, on the right side, you don't see the panorama. On the left side, you see the panorama or one piece of the panorama rolled from one piece to the other. And the same is on the other side. It's, we can't see it now. And so it seems as, as if you are steaming on the water on the Bay of Neapel, or I don't know what it was. Was it Neapel? Uh, uh, yes, Suez to Neapol, I, I think. Uh, I told and, me. And, he, and here in the right side, you see the uh, rolls of panoramas. And, and in the middle, you see the hydraulic uh, uh, to make the, uh, the boat uh, moving up and down. This one, no? No, no, no. These are. Uh, this uh, is no, this is from the screen, sorry. Yes, and this is moving up and down to make uh, uh, waves or uh, the movement of waves or the feeling of waves. Yes. That's great. That's made really by great. A, 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 dumb, um, steam machine. This is the steam machine. You see the steam machine. And why do you think that this point is like the high top and also the end? What, what? Why did they put so much money on it? And then... The, well, they put... Uh, on this exhibition, on the turn of the century, everything, everything, not only panoramas, everything was gigantic. Mm. It was the, the most important, uh, uh, perhaps the most important uh, uh, world exhibition uh, in this time. So mm. uh, panoramas has been... And panoramas... Um, was orama was huge and they thought mm -hmm. so many and after that it never happened again there were some some more panoramas in germany was made until uh, the german uh, the first first world war but uh, nothing in this scale and nothing uh, uh, exceptional and spectacular like these ones it was just the end nothing more because the the cinema was there uh-huh yeah you know cinema yes that this is a starting point of the cinema therefore the old the old media are out and, yeah so it's a kind it, of turn, they, turning point as well it, it, yes it's a turning point and also it's very symbolic that the uh, uh, the uh, brothers Lumiere were there as well, making like 1.5 million spectators during all uh, months of exhibitions. But it doesn't mean like one of Brazilian uh, authors, uh, Flavia Cesarino, Cesarino Costa, she reports that it doesn't mean that cinema was uh, uh, not a popular uh, media as well. The brothers w Lumiere were there as another big player. And at that moment, nobody knows which of them would have more... Uh, possibility of uh, being exploited 
and all of my oramas went to the forgotten era starting the mm. forgotten era and then cinema is starting his new uh, developing there it took another uh, five or seven years until the cinema got his special form you know how to handle how to organize how to do the films how to lend the films how uh, uh, to present it to the people and so on and it was very um uh, it, well, the danger of burning was very high because, uh, and so on. And all these problems have to be solved. It took only five years. Uh, they, uh, 1896, they, uh, the Lumières showed their invention. And uh, 10 years later, uh, every small city uh, in, for instance, I know it from Germany, has his uh, panoramas. The years in between, there were circuses cinema circuses going around but mm -hmm. only within within 10 years uh, the new media uh, was everywhere and everywhere had seen it mm -hmm. much much uh, quicker than the panorama uh, got popular yeah and the panoramas in the beginning of the 19th century were in london in paris and in vienna and sometimes uh, a moving, a moving, on a wandering panorama uh, come through, but the cinema after five years was everywhere. Mm. Yes, it just, was. was it was just the same, the same uh, thing, but much, much more modern, much more, more quick, and so on. And uh, also the possibility of making copies. Yes, in fact, enough. yes, in fact, yes. we cannot forget yes. that that moment the panoramas had like a hundred and thirty years of history. So it's mm -hmm. a median from the the eighteenth century that co uh, can could go until the beginning of the twentieth century. That's completely amazing. But she's at the same time was not only created, but uh, is, uh, the whole structural, uh, the, the, the whole uh, structure of the panorama belongs to the, the old world, not to the modern world, mm. in the way the, the gigantic, the way the, the, how many people you have to involve it to build. A, a whole building just for one single screen so the panorama it's a kind of yes it, it goes in a very high uh, 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 popularity but that's okay that's the mm. end of times not it's not not possible anymore to keep mm. uh, maintaining different rotundas in different countries in the world no and then you go to cheap cinemas with most cinemas, uh, theaters <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like Nickelodeon, etc. And then the media goes, and then we start a new era, no, of exploiting. Uh, so, uh, Stefan, let's go into the end of our interview. But before that, I would like you to talk about your experience with. Uh, Iranian, a Deutsch in Iranian artist who is alive. Yadegar Sizi. Uh, Yadegar Sizi. Yes, please. Yeah. I, I have a video uh, from YouTube from here. I will share. And then can you please present us who is okay? That's my life. I ended it. So this is a kind of Bible from everyone who wants to know about Panorama. So you have to buy this. Uh, of course, this is the English uh, version from uh, this, this book you have in German. Is that uh, translated into French? Do you have noticed what language more they are? Is this book translated? Not in French, not only in English. <laughs> Oh, okay. 
So we are about the end. As, oh, thank you, uh, Martin Gilbert. The episodes that you have created are so fantastic. Please don't stop. Keep going. Yes, this is a kind of advice that we want to see, to hear and learn more. Thank you about investigate, listen, and learn. Please join us for a live Zoom meeting on 17th April with the Magic Lantern Society. Yes, Martin, I will be there. Yes, with, with you. Uh, uh, of course, Martin is uh, uh, making a relation because it's our last episode. It was really fantastic experience uh, in being touching with all these uh, different researchers from the world. And now with this last episode with Stefan Otterman, who uh, hadn't been talking about Panorama for more than 30 years. I cannot believe on that. 20, 20 years, most 20, <laughs> 20 years. 20 yeah. years. Oh, that's too many times, too much time. Sorry about my English. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> we cannot afford that anymore. So I would like to thank you very much about that. Monique Wedzenberg, thank you very much from the Netherlands. So there are people from around many different countries watching us. So, uh, Stefan, uh thank you very thank much you. about you. did you enjoy you that your... yes uh nice show to make <laughs> <laughs> interesting i hope i hope we will do more yes let's do so maybe uh, we can start doing uh, another uh, flicker and flow uh, season number 2 <laughs> so thank you very much Thank you. Greetings from São Paulo, Brazil, to you. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao.